So I'm here to speak about uh, DDoS, or Distributed Denial Service, which is a pretty uh, uh, nasty topic, really, uh, and pretty annoying one, too. So what is a DDoS? A DDoS is an attack uh, on your infrastructure. It's an attack on your customers, and it's also an attack on your employees. Uh, it's really an attack on the entire being of your company. So what is a DDoS? Um, this is, uh, this is normal traffic. You can see traffic stays pretty local uh, to different pops. And then you have this slide, which shows a DDoS, where traffic is coming from a lot of different sources to places where it shouldn't be going. And here is another view of a DDoS. This is a medium-sized DDoS at about 160 gigabits per second, uh, where you can see uh, a start uh, about two hours before, which is probing, trying to figure us out, and then at some point, the floodgates open. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about. Uh, I'm here to talk about how this, this affects you in a non-technical way. Uh, and I'm starting with a story from 2nd of May 2006 for 4 p.m. PSD, which is a day I will always remember. Uh, and it's a day that was, the reason I will remember it is because of a company called Blue Frog Security. So this is the first DDoS of my life, and uh, I was working at, at Six Apart. And what Blue Frog was was an anti-spam DDoS engine, right? Anti-spam DDoS engine. So it was a thing you installed on your machine, and when you got spammed, all the machines that had this installed DDoS the URL that was in the spam. <laughs> uh, this was not popular by spammers. So they got targeted by spammers, in a pretty nasty attack, uh, and they hopped between different services. So they went from one service to another to another. And on 2nd of May 2006, 4 p.m. PSD, they pointed their DNS at us. Massive confusion in the Six Apart operations team. We lost all production access completely from outside. First thought was spanning tree outage. Right? That causes a massive loop, network goes completely offline. So we page our lead network engineer, who is busy moving a house and has to steal Wi-Fi from his neighbor to log in, except he can't log in because we don't have production access. So we declare an in incident, and we follow a, a rough incident command system, and the outage stops. Yay! It just went away. So if, it in, if you don't fix it, it ain't fixed, right? That's a belief I have in many parts of life. Uh, and we had no idea what happened. There was no trace, uh, and, but we declared it over. And about 20 minutes later, uh, the outage was back. Uh, and we declared another in incident. We started a phone bridge, we gathered resources, and we redispatched the team to the data center to fucking figure out what was going on. Massive confusion again. So we did some basic things. Turns out that we had a OB way into the data center that no one had tested or configured or really told anyone about. So we spent two hours getting that working so we could actually log into our data center and see what was going on. And then we determined that the internal network was perfectly fine. So after some going back and forward, what's wrong, what's wrong, someone said, maybe we are on the DDoS. And everyone's said, no, why would we be under DDoS? How would we be under DDoS? What's going on? No, it can't be a DDoS. Pretty much denial. So we made some, some pretty rash, rash decisions after that. We identified a source IP that was sending us a tremendous amount of traffic. OK, it starts looking like a, D, like a DOS. So we block it. And our DNS goes offline completely. We're not on the internet anymore from a DSS, DNS point of view. Uh, so it turns out that a third party DNS server, which was hardened for DDoS, result, turned into a forwarder for DNS requests when it was under DDoS. And what we were being DDoS was from our third party DNS server. So that was great. And we're now probably five, six hours into the incident when someone remembers that we actually purchased a DDoS mitigation device or service. <laughs> that 
had to be GRE tunnel, hide us from the internet, scrubs attack, had never been tested, have never been configured. Uh, so not configured at all. Uh, so we get on a phone call with our vendor, uh, and now it's probably 11 p.m. They paged all their network engineers, and we start trying to configure, or our network engineers tried to configure this. So we're basically panicked. At some point, we managed to mitigate the attack because we get this device up, we managed to uh, do a couple of things. We still don't know why we're being DDoSed, and now we're probably 12 hours into the attack. Um, so the attacker then moves on to another target. The other target is a large DNS registrar, and uh, they did not know why they were being attacked either. So we call them, we call their knock, and we say, hey, we should want to speak to your knock manager or security manager, and they say, no way, we're really busy, we're getting DDoSed. And we said, we know why you're getting DDoSed, you really want to call us back. And 15 minutes later, they call us back, and we go, hey, have you read this news story about blue security? And uh, he says, yes. And we go, do a who is on bluesecurity.com, and he does that, and then he says, thank you very much, and hangs up the phone. And about five minutes later, they change the name records to 127001, and the attack went away. The next day, I think we got about 35 boxes of pizza delivered to the office as a thank you, right? What I noticed during this attack is really the effect on people. People become hungry because you're running for a long time. People become sad. They become worried because it is not a normal incident. It's not like your normal outage. There is no timeline. You don't actually know when it's going to end. There is no reason, like no one tripped a cable or process failed. And, and this is you know, against what we believe, it's not actually blameless, right? It's not blameless, not blameless, not blameless. And the reason it's not blameless is not internal. It's because there's an asshole attacking you, <laughs> right? Somewhere on the other side, there's one or more assholes that is trying to make your life miserable, which is very different from a normal outage. It's not a process failure, it's not your fault, and your entire organization is under attack. It's not just the tech team. So you need to do some things. Uh, sleep schedules, food schedules, rotation of people becomes even more important because you don't have the timeline, right? So you need to tell people after eight hours you need to sleep because otherwise, you know, 44 hours later you're not gonna function. Uh, we order food for everyone in the office, but we also make sure we order food for all our remote employees because people forget to eat because this is high adrenaline. You force people offline, and then you have to spend a lot of time explaining to the entire organization what's going on, much more so than a normal event, because everyone gets scared. It, sometimes this becomes an existential, uh, or people believe it's an existential threat to the organization. And then you ask for help. Internet is generally helpful. There are some assholes out there who are not. So this is the email you don't want to get. We store all traffic metadata via NetFlow and can assist you in determining the target IP and type of attack at an hourly support cost of 50 bucks. When they were the source of the attack, right? This, they were the source of about 40 million packets per second coming from hacked PHP instances, right? That's not how you respond. You need to plan for a prolonged event. One of our DDoSes about a year ago, uh, our VP of infrastructure asked me, what happens if this is the new normal? We can't deploy, we can't change this, half the engineering team is trying to find how we mitigate and we're burning out our people. What if this lasts two months? How can we actually operate? So you really need to plan for that. DDoSes can be divided into economically rational attacks. This is when you get the, the Bitcoin letter. Those are actually easier because all you need to do is make it more expensive for the attacker to attack you than the expected gain from the ransom, right? So if he wants $5,000, it will cost him $2,000 or $500 on average. He collects this many. If you make it cost more than $5,000 to attack you or even four or three, he won't attack you. The worst attacks are economic, economically rational, right? And those falls into two categories. Uh, people with not much budget 
but they might hate you, uh, or they might hate one of your customers, or they might hate the city of New York and randomly pick a site that had the word New York in it, um, and then tweet about it. Or they can be a nation state attack, a nation state. And if it's a nation state, they basically always will have more resources than you. So it can be a political reason or an economical reason, or sometimes just pure asshole driven. Like someone wants to prove uh, that they can take you offline. You don't actually know. You have no idea where you're being DDoSed. So don't guess. There's no point in trying to second guess yourself, like why, blah, blah, blah. Just mitigate. That's all you can do. Um, to prepare for a DDoS, find the weak spots in your system. And DDoS doesn't have to be size, right? I can, if I can find a page on your website that does a thousand d database calls, and I hit that page, like your website goes down, and I don't need that much resource to do that. Uh, if I hit your front page and it's perfectly cached, I can do that 100,000 times a second probably, and nothing happens. But you need to find the weak points. You need to run drills for how you should react. Uh, we, we quite often get calls from people who are being threatened with DDoS, and they're very emotional because they're scared. If you run the drills, you at least know you have a predefined set of, of actions to take so you don't have to be uh, as, as scared. And you should model your, sorry, you should model your, your risk. You should model what happens if different parts of your infrastructure get under DDoS. You should have a partner. We have, you know, all of us have a lot of bandwidth. And the sad part about DDoS is if you have a 10 gig link and I send you 10, 10 gigs plus one byte, you're down. I have, you have a terabyte, terabit link and I send you a terabit plus one, you're down. You should configure the system. Don't make the mistake we had where we had the product, but we hadn't configured it or even remembered that we had the system. <laughs> Test it, sleep better, and then don't panic. Like, things will be okay. Attackers will go away. They can't sustain it forever. They burn resources while they're attacking you. Uh, the, the only exception to that is hosting providers who literally make money when their hacked servers attack you because they charge for bandwidth. Um, but even them, they have gotten much better at this. But don't panic. Help is out there. The internet is helpful. Carriers are helpful. Uh, and if you prepare, you can very much survive uh, Adidas. Thank you very much.